Welcome to another chapter of my bike engine car. It's powered by a Suzuki RF900 engine, which is a baby GSXR engine. It's about as small as a car can be. The engine, as you can see, is to the right of the driver to make it even more compact. I have about 130 horsepower and a car which is weighing in at about 370 kilograms. The car is built from mostly scrap components that I've had lying around in my spare parts bin. And as a result, there are a lot of unique solutions to complex problems. Today, I'm going to focus on making it go backwards there's no reverse gear on a motorcycle, so going backwards is a bit of a challenge. It's not unusual to use an electric starter motor off a car driving on to a flywheel or a flex plate attached to the diff to power a motorcycle car backwards. So I've never really seen these arrangements being successful. A um, starter gear to flex plate ring gear is typically say nine teeth on the starter to 108, 109 teeth on the ring gear which is a 10 to 1 ratio and the reverse gear tends to be uh, too high and the car driven backwards too fast with not enough uh, power to haul the car out of a tight spot and too much drain on the uh, battery, particularly if it's a small motorcycle battery. My plan then is to use a worm reduction. Uh, this is the worm gear off a American Dutton Lance and worm gear hand winch. I'll drive that on to a worm wheel, which still needs to be cut. I'll talk about that blank elsewhere. And then uh, to a pulley and V-belt uh, driving on the diff and that should let the car pull backwards quite strongly even given the inefficiencies in a worm gear arrangement. There'll be a lot of making this up as I go along. So the plan has survived a cup of tea the first step is to remove this end of the pinion so that I can have a face that lets me turn the cogs into dogs. Step two, increase the bore of the worm. Whatever this worm gear is made of, it doesn't take very kindly to being drilled. In the end, it was easier to take off the splines on the shaft than it was to drill a hole in this worm. Now I just have to notch it so that one thing dogs into the other. Right, that's coming along. I'm going to replace this temporary lash up. Step three, make a shaft to go up the inside of the worm and drive shaft from the starter motor and lock it all together.
using a module 3.18 spur gear as a model. I will use this to gnash up a spur gear. Another day, another template. With the paper template stuck to the blank, the idea now is to drill out each one of the holes that are in the root of each of the teeth and then come in with my angle grinder and gash out the V. I can then finesse each tooth with a file. The job doesn't have to be perfect. I can have quite a bit of play between the worm and the worm wheel, but each tooth has to clear the worm and remain strong. This crazy device here is designed to hold the angle grinder cut out vertical when I gash out the teeth for the worm wheel. It's on a long arm, maybe 1.2 meters, so that when I swing the angle grinder sideways, about 5 mil to the left and 5 mil to the right, to cut the teeth, the blade itself is held vertical. In fact, it does go off vertical, but only by about 0.2 or 0.3 of a degree, which is fine for the level of precision I'm using. All right, this is going to be crazy time, so let's go. And there we have it, one module 3.18 24 tooth spur gear to act as a worm wheel on my reverser unit. Some of the teeth went a little bit wonky, but the pitch circle is correct. And they clear the teeth in the worm so it should work even if there's more backlash than is desirable. Here's the reduction assembly so far. The homemade worm wheel. I've had to sleeve it with some aluminium sleeves driven on to the splines on the inside so that it fits the shaft. Then onto the same shaft goes the lower pulley, bearings on either side. That's driven by the sprocket of course. Then you can see I've cut the centre out of this pulley which attaches to the diff. Now I have to make an assembly to hold it all in place on the starter motor. Next job. The worm wheel has to engage at an angle relative to the worm itself to match the lead angle on the worm. I need to work out the angle on the worm, the lead angle, and I'll do that by wrapping a piece of tape.
7 degrees. After a lot of patient filing of the teeth on the worm wheel, worm wheel, here we are. It goes round and round. And if I hook it to power, it shows action. There's a lot of clanking and jankling, but it works and will do the job quite nicely. Here's the latest incarnation. It's been hacked about several times now to make it fit. The poly's been moved to the outside. A couple of legs have been added to fix it to the frame of the car. That way it can pull back on the legs and engage the pulley with the V-belt. The arrangement at the rear is light and simple. The pulley is fixed to the diff with uh, through bolts going through the diff and then threaded into the pulley and lock nutted. The pulley is sitting with standoffs, which isn't the strongest way to mount the pulley. Is if it Put a lot of horsepower torque through it it would twist them around but i've only got about 200 kilos pull on the top of the belt so the standoffs uh, will probably be strong enough for what's expected of them the belt hangs loose when the vehicle's running forwards and then when i pull up the tension at the other end the belt will slip in and engage with uh, both polys, with the drive poly and the driven poly. The poly sits slack and when I engage the unit by pushing it down, it'll tighten the poly onto the diff and then engage a micro switch to run the motor and give, a, give me a reverse motion, give me a reverse gear. So after all of that grinding and filing and shaping and fitting, does it actually work? There are some great thick cables on it because this is probably shifting 100 amps. I have a flaky old battery here which is barely 12 volts and is wearing out. But let's see if it drives us all backwards. I'll put a lever on it to operate the reverser. But in the meantime, I'll use my number 10 boot and a crocodile clip. The reversing motor might sound like it's in pain, but it goes backwards. And in its entire life of operation, it will probably only have to go backwards for a minute. This is much slicker. I've got away from the crazy pivoting uh, reverse idea, and I'm using a jockey wheel. I'm using a jockey wheel that comes down onto the back of the belt by pushing down on this lever. So now to reverse, although I've got to do the wiring, as soon as this moves, it'll engage the reverse motor 
and then effectively clutch the belt onto the um, front and rear pulleys and move the car into reverse that way. Well, I think it's safe to say that we're at a voila for that apparatus. With a decent sized battery with a bit of kick to it, I consider that a success.